everybody present. As a reminder, wear your mask the entire time you're in this space. It helps everybody to be masked, except for our performers on stage. Really, if you really want to be unmasked in here, you gotta be up here to talk to me because I can always find places for people to help lead songs and worship. Hint, hint. <laughs> At any rate, it is so good to see you. We're grateful you're here. We have an all-star lineup for this service led by the Covenant Accountability team of Jan Taddeo, Dave Dunn, Preston Regal, and Liz Roper. We have music from Greg Greenway, Friction Farm, and of course, our lovely and talented Shirley Meyer. It is an honor and I am grateful. So let us begin. Our chalice lighting reading this morning is by the Reverend M. Maureen Cloran. For every time we make a mistake, and we decide to start again, we light this chalice. But every time we are lonely and we let someone be our friend, we light this chalice. But every time we are disappointed and we choose hope, we light this, our chalice. Opening words this morning are We Covenant by Janice Marie Johnson. Covenants are intentional, covenants are audacious, covenants are a promise that can change our lives together in this faith. Together we will be stronger, together we will be wiser, together we will be gentler. We promise to recognize our uniqueness, to treasure our faith to honor our neighbors with holiness. We covenant to be committed to each other, to consider each as significant, to consider each as valuable. We covenant to be invitational, to be accepting, to speak grace-filled truth, to forgive each other over and over again, and yes, to love. Our covenant stands firm. It is our embodiment of faith in each other. It is our blessing of each other. It is our commitment to each other. May we hold this community as a precious gift. May we hold our relationships as gifts that transcend borders. May we carry forth the intention of our covenant, the audacity of our covenant, the promise of our covenant, now and in the years to come. May it be so. invite us to uh, rise in body or spirit and hum or sing with your mask on uh, to when I am frightened the words are on your order of service by Shelley Jackson Dunn.
some of your questions with me. If you will show me compassion, then I may learn to give as you do. Then I may learn to give. When I am troubled, will you listen to me? When Dirty laundry, dirty laundry, dirty laundry. Dirty laundry, dirty laundry, oh my dirty laundry. Hey, uh, Preston. What are you doing? Well, with this, our dirty laundry, the same thing I always do with it. I'm sweeping it under this rug. There, mischief managed. Hey, what? 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 What's this? Yeah, Preston, this isn't going to work. What's not going to work? This, this is not going to work. Sweeping all of this dirty laundry under the rug is not going to work. Why not? It's worked for all these years at Susi, and it can still work now, whenever we are out of covenant with one another, or when we fail to extend that covenant to WCF, we, 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 we create some dirty laundry. And if you have some dirty laundry, then you can just, you can just slide it under the rug. No need to air it out. That would be inconvenient. So actually, this hasn't worked all these years. It didn't work when we were at Virginia Tech. It didn't work when we were at Radford. And I hate to break the news to you, but it's not working here either. Yeah, Preston, WCU has told us so. And on top of that, they put us on probation. Probation? Us? Yes, us. Yeah, if we don't do something about our dirty laundry, WCU may not ask us to come back. If Virginia Tech was strike one. And Radford was strike two. Then WCU would be strike three. We're out. You don't get four strikes. And anyway, other universities and venues are beginning to smell our dirty laundry from here and they may not want any part of us. Yeah, and with no place to go, it could be the end of Susie. The end of Susie? I couldn't imagine a world without Susie. You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind, a dimension where Susie does not exist, has never existed. What happened? Where are we? Um, excuse me, we have a meeting in here shortly, so you'll have to leave. Oh no, it's okay. I'm with Susie. Susie? Susie. Susie? What's a Susie? Susie, Liz, tape. 
You don't know me? It's Preston. Oh, I'm sorry, but we don't know you. And we don't know Susie. Susie. We don't know her either. What, were you up too late last night at barbecue scene? Wait, barbecue scene? What's that? First, Susie, now barbecue Is this some new ubby dubby type language we haven't heard of? Lubiz, dubu, dubu, nobo, wabat, dubiz, habersen, ubiz, tabakabing, ababout? Nubo, dubo, dubo, ubi, thubi, thube, nubid, subum, hubel. Translation Do you know what this person is talking about? Not at all. I think they need some help. No, Susie, S U U S I, Southeast Unitarian Universalist Summer Institute. Oh, okay, I got you. I understand. Susie, S U U S I, Southeast Unitarian Universalist Summer Institute. Never heard of it. You know, we have a banner parade worship. We have a great coffee at the common ground. It, you can listen to music at Cabaret or dance the night away at Serendipity. <laughs> sounds great. Yeah, sounds lovely. Uh, yeah, still never heard of it. This can't be happening. You know, uh, Susie, you can, you can buy great art at the Artisan's Bazaar, buy books and CDs at the bookstore, go on nature trips, more music at concert hour. Yeah, it sounds really great. We really should are you, consider doing this. Are you writing this all down? Uh, yeah, of course. I know. You couldn't forget Twab, you know, with the Twab cow. Twab. Don't tell me. It's part of this Susie language. Twab cow. I've never heard of that variety, but we do have a great veterinary school. Oh, Susie gods, please help me. I promise not to sweep our dirty laundry under the rug. I promise, I promise to do my best to live in covenant with all our community. I promise to extend the same to all WCU staff. I promise, just bring Susie back. Preston, are you okay? Preston, why were you down there on your knees a moment ago? Uh, Liz, Dave, is it you? Are we really here at Susie? Uh, of course we're here at Susie, silly. Did you stay up too late last night at barbecue -C? Yeah, where did you think you were? Oh, I, I don't know, but we, this, we, this, we really need to address all this dirty laundry. Um, we need to own this. It is, do you believe in what this is? Haversen, who is Tabakabin of about? Translation Do you know what this person is talking about? Ubez, Uband, Ubi, Thubink, Ube, Nubi, Tubo, Ubel. Translation Yes, and I think we, we need to help. Watching the clothes go round in the washing machine for the time this week. I hate the way it cycles and it screams, but I've got to complain. I confess all to the trailer park priest, but he cannot save me.
makes all her decisions when we take our first breath. I did not inhale all this searching for my true beginnings. It's been a less than holy day. I confess all to the trail of my priest, but he cannot save me. Set me free. Big storm came through. Now the challenge of the new life I created is to forget all I knew. I confess all to the trail of our priest, but he cannot save me. I'm not be living with the traitors and the all to the trailer park priest, but he cannot see me. I might be living with the traitors and the thieves. This is not me. So the the story is that this is the one seventeen. So depending on what you count as being a Susie, I've been coming home for 17, uh, 13 years. Um, so the only times I have memory of not being a Susie during this time of year would be the last two years. And my life right now looks like this. I go to App State in June, uh, and studying to the ministry. are the primary things that are going on in my life right now. And I'm from Michigan. I'm from Detroit area in Michigan. Um, and how did I find out about App State? I, I, was, I was here in 2019 um, or 2018 and I met somebody who went to App State and we started talking and at first I was joking around like, oh, I'll, you know, I'll transfer to your school. Um, and then it was like less of a joke. Um, and so I started looking into like App State and I realized this program is like way better than the one where I'm at right now. Um, and I love North Carolina because y'all have cookout and I'm not gonna lie, that was like a huge reason for me deciding to move down here. Um, so I had people was the thing. I had a community here who was ready to accept me outside of the one week that we get to come to WCU or Radford or Virginia Tech. Um, I had a community who was here at App State in Boone, ready to receive me and help with that transition process. 
um, which is why ultimately I had the confidence to move, to move down here and start that new life, just completely re overhaul everything. Um, nothing was the same. And so when I, when I say that my life wouldn't be the same, um, without Susie, I don't mean it like that. I mean, I wouldn't have one. The message today and all week may be a pretty heavy handed one, but I really need you guys to take it seriously because this is our last shot. Thank you. This is our family's 27th Susie. I could be here a long time sharing the ways in which my life and our family's life would be different if Susie didn't exist. So I'll just share a few of the many treasures you have given me and my family that serve to express the gratitude I feel for Susie. One thing that has been core is the expanding circles of friends. It all began with peaches left in our shared bathroom at Radford in 97. That's how we met Robbie and Steve Greenberg, our dorm neighbors. They took us under their wing and helped us get connected with music and musicians at Susi. From those early connections, we discovered music festivals, folk alliance, house concerts, music week, and developed wider and wider circles of friends over the years. Thanks in large part to these connections, my beloved Russ has grown in his guitar skills and has written several songs, thanks in part to the songwriting community and the workshops he's discovered through some of these connections. Our lives were also influenced by Kip and Christine Barkley, who led the Couples Enrichment Workshop we participated at our first SUSE in 96. Not only did that workshop provide us with skills for a healthier and en enricher life partnership, it also inspired us to lead a couples retreat in our home congregation that was just fabulous. I have built on those skills as a minister, coaching couples before their weddings and throughout their partnerships, a part of my ministry that is profoundly fulfilling. And I put a big piece of that right there to that beginning. If I had never found Susie, I might've missed learning about the labyrinth from Kip Barkley when he built a labyrinth out of string lights and taught me how to engage with this contemplative practice if not for that experience, I might not have the 50 foot labyrinth in my backyard today <laughs> where I go to nurture my soul. If it weren't for Susie, I would not have known many of you dear people here today. And I treasure the memories of those beloveds who have blessed my life in countless ways, who have left empty chairs at our tables. People like Kip Barkley and Mindy Simmons and so many more. Our son Davin started coming to Susi when he was 11 and he was a regular Susi participant through his young adult years. He still has many connections and circles of friends that developed here that are precious to him and to his beloved Rachel, who's also been a part of our community for several years. And I wouldn't have that amazing photo of Rachel and I at the top of Dragon Tooth if we didn't have Susi. If Susie isn't here in the future, I would certainly be sad, and I'm sure you would be too, but I would grieve most deeply for the generations of children who had missed the opportunities for shared experiences, both multi-generational and among their peers. They would miss developing the deep friendships and expanding circles of connection that come out of such a large gathering of kindred spirits. They would not have the opportunity to experience being part of this community of care built on the values of our shared Unitarian Universalist faith. So I don't really care too much for UU jokes, but here's one that works for me. How many Unitarian Universalists does it take to change a light bulb? Well, really only one or as many as you want, but the light bulb has to really want to change. So be the light bulb that wants to change. I want Susie to change, to live more fully into our best selves individually and as a community, but we all have to want Susie to change because we are Susie. I want each and all of us to embrace holding ourselves and each other accountable for being the best guests we can be when we gather at someone else's home in someone else's town. 
So when you see or hear someone not living into our covenant and our commitment to being good guests, say something in a kind and gentle way. Invite them to take a breath, step away, practice halt. Are they hungry, angry, lonely, tired? Do they need to take care of themselves so they can get grounded again? Offer to have a conversation with them to process their feelings and actions and begin again in love. And if someone approaches you about being a better guest, thank them for caring enough about you and about the future of Susi to be so courageous as to offer their support. The future treasures of Susi are truly on the line. And I want to close this reflection with the song that brings me back year after year, just one verse. And you all, most of you know it, and you could sing it with me. And you'll pick the key that I start on. <laughs> <laughs> dear friends, dear friends, let me tell you how I feel. You have given me your treasure. I love you so. Where would I be without Susie? Um, my first Susie was 2013. And I had just finished uh, a religious education internship at the Tennessee Valley Unitarian Universalist Church in Knoxville. And I was just ready to go to Susie and then start a new job at another congregation. And I'd found out that the American immigration system had other ideas. And so I uh, no longer had a house. I did not have a job. I had recently broken up with my three-year boyfriend and um, I wasn't allowed to work or leave the country. So I was in a jumble and I drive into Susie and I had not planned anything. I did not know who would be there. I did not know what it would be like and I was driving my ex's car, and I drive in feeling disgruntled that I didn't know which parking lot to go in, and the signs weren't there, and really it was because I was discombobulated in my life. And as I was driving into the parking lot, the first car with people I saw were two familiar faces of people who I'd known from the wider movement, who I'd met in young adult circles elsewhere. And they were so happy to see me. I'd not seen them in several years and they were hanging out the windows, waving at me. They didn't know I was coming. And I was reminded, this is where I can be home, at least for this week. And what I didn't realize is that my uh, disrupted status in the States would last six months where I was not allowed to work and not allowed to leave. And in that six months, I went up and down the East Coast, mostly staying with people who I was connected with through SUSE or other Unitarian connections, who housed me and fed me when I could not feed and house myself. And eventually when the government said, you know what, um, you can leave. I did, but I came back. I came back several times and this community held me in a wider space than just this week, just as Preston shared. And it not only held me, but several years later when I had got into Canada to work as a director of religious education, it held me and my mother. My mother came over from the UK as well and we had a fantastic week where we could reconnect in a way that allowed us to both be our individual adult selves and connect where we're not having to stay under the same roof, which can be difficult when you don't live in the same city as your parents. And so we had our own rooms. We did a fantastic workshop together. We did more than one. And we had our own communities. We took in my mother as well. And we came back again and did the same thing. And even as I come back this year, and she is uh, in the UK this year, I had several people say, we miss your mama. Tell her that we said hi. 
And so SUSI not only gives you a community of care, but allows you to make connections within your own family. And I hope that as time goes on, if I were to have children of my own, imagining what it would look like if I could convince my father to come and come and have grandparents and parents and children. And it's not difficult to imagine because so many people do that here already. And it is such a wonderful place to share our faith and community together and has so many connections and ripples out that people don't realize. And I am so grateful for this community. Hi, I'm Dave Dunn. And in 2016, I was called to be the minister of the UU Metro Atlanta North Congregation in Roswell, Georgia. And I moved down from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So this is about since I've since 2016 I've been coming here Susie so six or seven years. Um, but prior to that, up north, I went to like Susie North, the Ohio Meadville District Summer Institute, which is in Ohio. And uh, we started going there in 1999, me and my wife and my four kids. And that week was the week around the calendar week that the world revolved around for my children more than Christmas. We never went to the ocean. We never went to the Grand Canyon. We never went to the Rockies. We asked them if they wanted to go. They always wanted to go to UU summer camp. And actually in 2005, uh, Mindy Simmons came up and attended, drove from Florida up to Ohio and attended our camp. She sung, she even uh, led our Midlers group one year. And she, after our week, she drove down to this week here with you all. So it was very bittersweet. When I moved from Pennsylvania down here, because I had to leave all my Ohio Meadville district friends. Yet, I am so grateful that I now only have to drive two hours to meet you all. And although I've lost some friends up there, we've become more distant. I've, over the last couple of years, I've gotten to know you all, and this is a beautiful community. And I'm, I am so grateful that I can have this experience here uh, so close to home. So thank you for that. Never want to lose that. So at this time, we want to give you the opportunity to reflect upon what Susie means to you privately and what it might mean or what your life might look like if Susi had not existed. And we will do this by entering into a moment of shared silence. Thank you. One of the ways that we live into our Unitarian Universalist values is by giving back to the communities which we participate in. My name is Kimmy Regal. I coordinate the SUSI service project with the Silva Community Table a soup kitchen and pantry. Since we've come to Western Carolina University in 2016, we have been working with the community table, helping to serve meals and taking collections of various physical as well as financial donations. In our one week a year, we have become about 3% of their budget. I want to say a very special thank you 
to those in our community who have continued to contribute to the soup kitchen, even though we were not here. In 2020, you sent almost $2,500 to the soup kitchen without me even having to stand up here. That's living our values. While things have been difficult, the soup kitchen has been able, to, with a grant, to create a partnership between the table and local farmers. Thus, during COVID, they have been able to increase the quality of the food and keep the farmers afloat. They serve thousands of meals a week through a drive up program. They are truly amazing. I look forward to the time when we can go back there and serve meals again. This year, we're going to go and stuff envelopes and help them with the fundraiser. Today, I'm asking you to use your resources to keep these wonderful services available and growing for the hungry of Jackson County. I'm asking you to put money into the baskets at the, as they come around. Maybe you don't have very much money today. Maybe you don't have a check. Maybe you didn't even know we were taking an offering. That's okay. You can give what you can today, and then you can give more later. Susie is generous, and I am grateful. Always been a dreamer. It's the way that I've found. I keep in my head in the clouds, my feet off the ground. From that stumbling. What's going to help me stay? The romance of the loner is the power of one. You know, it takes the power of many to get anything done. Anything.
Whatever got you to this door, whatever brought you this way. From that stumbling, humbling rain. Love has brought us here. Oh, love's gonna help us to stay. gonna help us oh love's gonna help us love is gonna help us to stay moment for gratitude. Thank you for your contributions to the community table. You can also go to their website at communitytable.org and you can offer a contribution through PayPal. I also want to offer gratitude to our worship team, to our tech team, to Shirley and Greg and Aiden and Christine for getting up really early <laughs> to come down here and help with the service. So thank you. And thank you all for being here. <laughs> um, well, now, see, now I'm anxious about whether this is in the right spot all the time. Um, the closing words are by the Reverend um, Joseph M. Cherry. It's called a prayer for living intention. Um, if we have any hope of transforming the world and changing ourselves, we must be bold enough to step into our discomfort, brave enough to be clumsy there, loving enough to forgive ourselves and others. May we as a people of faith be granted the strength to be so bold, so brave, and so loving. We extinguish our chalice today with the birds from a Reverend Elizabeth Sell Jones. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth the warmth of community or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world until we are together again. Amen, blessed be, may it be so.